Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Watson Bloom video for you. I'm trying out a different setup than usual because before I would just show them where they are in the collection but I feel like with artificial lights and everything the white balance is really difficult so I'm just trying it out like this now. Yeah as you can see it's we have a lot of Tolumnias. It's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere and winter season is Tolumnia season. But I do have a few other bits and bobs in between and I want to start maybe with those. And the first one that I was really excited about is this one. This is the Lelia Anseps Cerulea. I do actually have two more Lelia Anseps. Those I received from Afri Orchids in a joint import together with uh, Nina from Ninjas Orchids and Fernando Nascimento. And that was really cool because both of those are actually also in Spike. But this is the one I received from Curling Orchidea when I went there together with my friend Daphne. And unfortunately, I guess the flowers are not really the freshest anymore. This is obviously the first bloom of this plant. Stephen and Camping Lewis always says, oh, this is the ugliest and like most short-lived and least fragrant the flower is ever going to be. But I was still really excited because when I received this plant I had to repot it, the media was a little smelly. And but it was already in spikes, so I was a little worried that it might just drop the bloom. But it didn't. As you can see, yeah, they're not super fresh anymore. It's already fading away. It's been open for a week now. And I'm really happy with it. So it hasn't I haven't really detected any overt fragrance. So if I really go for it. Um, I can smell maybe some light licorice notes, like very fresh anise or something. Um, according to the internet, this plant is supposed to be very fragrant and very like vanilla I I don't know, that's not what I detect, but I guess maybe next year when the plant is more mature, it can deliver on a more spectacular bloom show. Either way, I'm really happy there's already kind of a new growth potentially coming and lots of roots as well. So this plant is definitely on a great way. And as I said, the other two Lilia Anseps I have that I received in um, the imports also are in Spike, which I did not expect because I thought, you know, after being transplanted to a different hemisphere and being in transit for so long, they wouldn't really do anything for a while, but they seem to be really well off, so that's nice. Yes, and then while we're speaking about imports, I want to mention this one. This is my Cattleya Genmaniae Rubra. And um, I received this one in an import from Bella Vista which is a nursery in Brazil. And you have to keep in mind most of these plants, when we import them, they come without any roots. And as you can see, it's been really working on a really nice root system. So there's quite a bit of growth there. And now we have a sheath as well. I'm personally pretty sure that this is actually a blind sheath. I try to kind of hold it against the light and I don't really see a shadow of a flower bud inside of this sheath at all. But nevertheless, I think this is a really nice sign because it means the plant is slowly getting mature. It's kind of starting to consider blooming and so maybe next year the sheath that it will produce is going to contain an actual flower bud. So that's really nice. The only thing I'm a bit worried about is that Gail kind of started looking at this plant as well. So this is a little sad but hopefully I can get rid of them or at least contain them enough. Ugh, I hate them. So yeah, scale. The next one is also from Curlin Orchideen. This has been in bloom now for a very long time. This is the Miltonia Vignellii. There are only two flowers left. It um, started off with five. They have several huge mother plants and this is just a cutting that I received for five euros. It decided to bloom already. Originally I had gotten this plant thinking it's going to smell like warm cozy vanilla. Mm, not really. When I smell these flowers, 
What I get is more like cilantro. It has like a slight orange peel note as well, but it's definitely like this soapy, very pungent cilantro fragrance, which is a bit confusing. Like, you know, as a Central European, cilantro isn't really a spice that I use a lot in my cooking. And I don't know if I expect warm, cozy vanilla and luxury, and it smells like cilantro. I don't know, it's, it's odd for sure. Nevertheless, it's been a pretty long lasting flower. I think this has been almost two months now. So that's definitely really nice. And I'm excited to see this plant kind of grow into a bigger specimen and then maybe deliver even more spectacular blooms. Speaking of developing into a specimen, so I have two Miltoniopsis, and this is the bigger one of the two of them. As you can see, it's not in bloom quite yet, but as you can also see, it's a huge plant. And I'm super excited because so this is the bulb that's currently working on flowers. We have one, two, three, four, five spikes on this plant. So this is the most this Miltoniopsis has ever produced spike-wise. It's always been kind of two in parallel and then maybe like a month or so later a third one. But now five. This is definitely a record under my care and I'm so thrilled with this. It's so cool and there are multiple pseudobulbs that are still maturing so uh, I can expect actually more flower spikes to come. The beauty of this plant is that the winter flower or like the it kind of it blooms several times a year and the winter flush of blooms lasts a very long time so i know that these blooms can definitely be on the plant for two months or so and they smell so luxurious it's a very strong fragrance that fills the room kind of before noon and then into the early afternoon. It's very warm and cozy, very complex. It's like rose and honey with a little zesty twist to it. And I love it. The flowers are huge. They are like a really nice red shade. And it's just altogether such a great plant to have. I feel like every year this plant gets better and better at its display. So that's really nice. And especially because I don't have a lot of red flowers in my collection even though red is actually one of my favorite colors when it comes to flowers i feel like many orchids that i'm interested in in general don't really have red flowers so having a really nice red blooming orchid is definitely delightful another one that i have is this tolumnia it's a tiny plant as all tolumnias are this one presents really cute nice red flowers these ones have been open for two weeks already so the color has faded a little, but there's a second flower spike coming. Last year this plant had one spike and this year it's two. So that's it's really nice to see this progression. But yeah, really happy with this one as well. And then the next Tolumnia I want to show to you is this one. And uh, this is Tolumnia Black Ball. I love this plant just because of its moody display. This color is this deep kind of maroony red with some purple splotches and some white and yellow patterning. Really enjoy it. This It's like black ball. It's not quite black at all. Fits really the mood of like the late November to December weather in Germany where I live. It's kind of this, you know, I had clouds, mist, fog, and I feel like having these almost dull colors kind of brings a little bit of this mood into my home as well and I really like it for that. It's not, you know, there are other plants that have really flashy colors and this one is just a little more subdued and I think this makes it really elegant and as I said very appropriate for the season. This year it had one spike, this year there are two, but this one seems to be a little weird. I'm not sure what's happening there. The flowers, maybe the bulb buds all blasted. I'm not 100% sure what happened there but anyways I still have this spike for a really nice display and with Cholumnias 
If you are lucky, they actually branch. So there are some nodes here on the spike. Sometimes they decide to put out secondary flowers. So you never know with them. So yeah, and then I was talking about the more flashy colors. This one is a community pot actually of Tolumnia Flyer Super Red and this is the Tolumnia Flyer Sporty. I already mentioned to you that they branch sometimes the flower spikes and this is actually what's happening here. You can see that there is a little offshoot with lots of new buds. These flowers again are a little worn so they're already a little faded. It's been open I think for two or three weeks now and when they started they were a very vibrant kind of borderline fluorescent pink which is so not my color in real life but i feel like on this tolumnia it really works because you have to contrast against the green foliage and just pops it's so bright and so fun so i really like this and it's a really nice pattern as well because you have this huge lip which is a little frilly and then you have all these spots all over it, so that's really nice. Unlike most Tolumnias, this one has a slight fragrance, like a daisy, I would say. It's not something like that's gonna fill the room, or it's not something where I'm like, oh yeah, this is a fragrant orchid, but it's definitely not non-fragrant, let's just put it that way. And then, while we're talking about slightly fragrant Tolumnias, this is Tolumnia White Beauty. I really like this one because when the flowers first open you can see that they have different colors along the flower spike i'll just insert a photo of that from uh, last year actually this one is the complete opposite to the two telomeres i've shown you right now this is very light in color and it has just a few spots but i really enjoy it because again it has this slight daisy fragrance which if you go close to the plant, you can kind of notice it. And like sticking with the theme of my like slightly older Tolumnias, last year I had one spike, this year we have two, and you can see there are still lots of flowers to come. I really like Tolumnias because at least these more complex hybrids are very easy to grow, I think. They're very easy to care for, but they are so rewarding because the flowers are really fun. They don't take a lot of space. The flowers last quite a long time and they change color over the course of their lifetime, right? So they may open and be like for this one, for example, they open and some of them are yellow. And then this background color kind of fades to this more cream color with a little bit of lilac splotches. And also the underside on this one is really nice because it has this more pronounced darker pink and maroon, which I really enjoy as well. Then I have this one here, which is Tolumnia Brown Corona. This one has been in bloom actually in summer several times. And now it decided to give me yet another spike. It took a while to get this one in bloom after I got it. It had to, get, I guess, get acclimatized to my growth space. But now it's a really nice, reliable bloomer. And I think this is a really nice fall color palette that it has, it has this like red, orange, yellow, and kind of maroon on it. This one is really nice. And I also have the red Corona, which I actually like even better. And this one's also, as you can see, it bloomed earlier this year and it's also producing a spike now. I'm just so excited about these Tolumnias because I know that they'll be in bloom in for the next several weeks. They're very reliable and easygoing. And I feel like this is why I added them to my collection because I do go a lot for these Cattleya species, but it's really nice to have these fun little plants in between to kind of keep you occupied while you're waiting for the other species, the Cattleyas, to grow old enough to be able to bloom. So definitely one of the genera I recommend for this are Tolumnias and the other one for sure, if your climate allows, would be a Miltoniopsis maybe, or let me get them, or you grow Paphiopetalums. These are actually two plants from my recent haul from Schwerter Orchideen and they already came in bud obviously. And so this is Paphiopetalum tonsum, which is this one and Venustum, which is this one. 
and I'm so happy with them. Can you see? This is so cute. I really like the Tonsum for its kind of very subdued color palette. It's very it's green and maroon and it, it shows it off really nicely. Um, on the website it looked more golden, which I was really excited about because it's definitely a color I don't have in any flowers here, but this one, uh, the way it presents here is definitely also really nice. Something that I find really hard to capture on camera are the little hairs they have where all of the petals kind of come together and they add a really interesting texture to the flower so I really like this and then obviously the tonsum I love the little dots I love the kind of gradient into red I like also here the hairs on the side they give so much interest to the flower and for me though the biggest factor is the veining. It's just so nice on the pouch, these veins. And um, I also have the album ver variety where the whole flower is kind of green and white. And there the veins come out even stronger and I love this. Obviously for both of these, this is the first time they bloom and the tonsum already has a new growth coming. So this is definitely interesting to see how long they last. They just opened two days or so ago, but yeah, really exciting. Love those as well. And I think so far these model leaf puffy petalums are very easy to care for for me. So that's definitely also exciting. Even though I did cheat a little bit and got them already in spike. And then, last but not least, I have another plant, which I also, I made a video about this plant actually. This is my Epidendrum melanoporphyreum. As you can see, the buds are just opening now, um, but I know that I won't have time later on to film. So I just want to show the plant now. A few months ago, I made a video where I'm like, oh my God, we have to save this plant because it was kind of drying out. Turns out this plant really prefers more moisture than I thought it needs but now you can see it just decided to send a flower spike from its new growth unfortunately there's a bud that's blasting but i don't care because there are several other ones to come i really like this plant it's just so dark it has a similar color palette to the tulumnia black ball that i mentioned earlier just instead of being a matte flower this one is shiny i really enjoy that the column and everything almost look a little bit like a nose. Yeah, it almost looks a little bit maybe like a rodent. But I really enjoy the color palette, like the green versus this really dark purplish maroon. It's shiny, it's unfortunately not scented, but you know, you can't have everything. It's just such an interesting plant and I think it adds a little bit of texture and color to my uh, forest of Cattleyas. <laughs> I definitely enjoyed that one as well. So yeah, there's a lot going on in my orchid collection and I'm just so happy that the plants kind of show me that they enjoy their life here. Thanks a lot for watching, for sure. If you have any more questions concerning any of the plants that I showed today, don't hesitate, just ask right away. Uh, I will get back to you in the comments. If you have any more in-depth questions, I can also make videos about separate plants. I mean, I have care collapse on the Miltoniopsis, the Tolumnias and the Paphiopedalums. Yeah, just let me know. And uh, let me also know what's in bloom in your collection right now. And with that said, thanks a lot for watching and happy holidays, right? It's the season. Also, happy new year if uh, these are things that apply to you where you live in your culture. So yeah, see y'all later. Bye.